डॉक्टर डी बालाजी एस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एमबीए सी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी बैंड आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक आईओटी एकेडमी फॉर गिविंग मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू प्रेजेंट रिगार्डिंग टू लीडरशिप स्किल्स फॉर टीचर्स नाउ इट इज टीचर्स आर द रोल मॉडल्स फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स इन शेपिंग आउट देयर फ्यूचर्स इन गाइडिंग देयर कैरियर्स इन एवरी स्फीयर ऑफ देयर लाइफ्स टीचर्स आर देयर रोल मॉडल्स so when the teachers are like this when the teachers are the role models what leadership skills a teacher should possess in order to guide their students in order to lead the students what the leadership skills a teacher should possess who is a teacher first of all a teacher is a person or an individual who helps others in various ways to acquire knowledge knowledge with regarding to factual knowledge conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge metacognitive knowledge so various types of knowledges will be there so a teacher will shows the way to the students to acquire the knowledge and the skills required to lead his life in a potential way the values what the students has to get and the similarly the competence by which the students has to lead in the society and at the same time information which is prerequisite in numerous ways for the betterment of one's own life and the society at large so with regarding to skills what type of skills a student require in order to lead a beautiful life in this society the creativity skills the critical thinking skills and decision making skills interpersonal skills management skills communication skills team work analytical active listening like this there are various skills required for the students to lead a beautiful life at the same time the values these values constitute attitude and behavior that the society consider essential for coexistence and well being the values these values are social values ethical values intrinsic values equality honesty democracy spiritual respect and culture there are many types of values and the competence it is the ability to do something successfully or efficiently so what what type of competence is required the core competence in the job competence family competence leadership competence behavior technical functional and organization so when the students gets all this one not only the students any one who or in dire need of all this knowledge a teacher is the one a teacher is a leader who will show the way for these individuals to get all this the major role of a teacher is to support learners in the quest of a new knowledge on a specific set of subjects so there should be first of all a learner should have zeal to learn the things then only a teacher can show them when the learner is don't having the zeal that need the necessity then he can't learn the teacher whatever the teacher teaching to the student the teacher teaching to students it won't receive by the students at all so there should be a need for the there should be a zeal for the students to learn the things then when there is a need and necessity for the student to learn the things the teacher is will be ready to give this knowledge for the student to acquire this knowledge the, the teacher will show the way how to acquire the knowledge, how to acquire the skills how to acquire the values and how to be potentially to the competent in the society the famous quote given by the socrates i cannot teach anybody anything i can only make them think so teaching is nothing but telling the information like this the william of the world what he told the medical teacher tells the good teacher explains the superior teacher demonstrates and the great teacher inspires so if a person if a teacher is teaching to the students just with regarding to information is just like a teacher so what socrates socrates told i cannot teach anybody anything just i can only make them think if you give inputs to the students if you give inputs to the students with regarding to all the facilities all the knowledge all the value skills everything 
then the students will start thinking. The students will know. So what inspires the students? A great teacher inspires. A great teacher is what great teacher? What a teacher who inspires in the students. Inspire learners to unleash hidden talents, potentials, passion, and enlighten the fire to achieve the dreams which learners dreamed in their lives. As Abdul Kalam has rightly said, dream and don't go to bed until the dream comes true. So that light, that fire has to be ignited. The fire has to be ignited by the teacher. So the leadership, the, that is the skills, that the leadership skills should possess a person to become a great teacher. And these things will inspire the students to become something in their lives. So what is a teacher leadership? The teacher leadership is the process to improve the current teaching approaches and the develop new teaching methods to further students' academic success. Not only the academic success, but also their personal life success. So improve the current teaching approaches. What are the current teaching approaches? Now, every day, in the olden period, in the olden methods, the, the, teaching, the teaching styles is altogether different. There will be like root learning. They will by heart. And they will write it down. Now the generation is not done. Then the present generation is utilizing all the electronic facilities like laptops, tabs, mobiles, everything. The information is tremendous. So improve the current teaching approaches. A teacher should improve. He has to upgrade his knowledge. He has to uh, he has to upgrade with all those techniques and he wants to improve the teaching approaches new methods also instead of old teaching methods like uh, classroom teaching methods board system everything nowadays it is all with regard to the online teaching methods everything so maybe teaching methods also improve. so you should possess that type of uh, initiatives leadership functions of teachers introducing school-wise practices Initiatives like new curriculum implementation, effective educators in their classrooms. So, next, the definition of teacher leadership. It is the knowledge, skills, and dispositions demonstration by the teachers who positively impact student learning by influencing others formally and informally beyond individual classrooms. It is not the teacher's role where he will present only his ideas and everything only in the classroom. The teacher should inspire students beyond the class. Whatever the, the teachings, whatever he tells to the students, the student should apply uh, uh, the student should apply this one in practice. So the this this thing should reflect among themselves and they should become a good individuals so beyond individual classrooms not only in the classrooms these the knowledge which you are providing to your students it will you should be helpful to them to think outside also in order for teacher leaders to flourish teacher leaders must possess the knowledge skills needed to be the knowledge the knowledge not the data not the information Process the information, the analyzed information should be there in one's mind who is a teacher, especially. The process and information should be there, and he should apply, apply this knowledge on students for their betterment in their lives. And similarly, the skills what are the skills in the next uh, slides? We are going to discuss about the skills, what they should be. The skills teachers, leaders need to be effective in a variety of roles can be broken into five main categories. What the teacher leaders, if a person wants to be a, like a, a good teacher who leaves his students like a uh, like anything. So he wants to, uh, these uh, skills, what is this? working with adult learners. So how he will work with them, the everybody, the adult learners, students, everything. Communication, how effectively he will communicate with the students, how effectively, either in the classroom, in the outside, with their parents, everywhere, how effectively he is communicating. Working with the learn, adult learners, communication and the collaboration, how effectively he is collaborating. 
all the segments of the schools, students, teachers, uh, faculty, I mean to say faculty, everybody. And the knowledge of content and pedagogy. So knowledge of the content on what he is teaching to the students, he should have command over knowledge. And the systems thinking with regarding to the systems of the uh, schools, with regarding to the organization in which he is working. So he should have clear cut understanding of all these things. Now, knowledge and skills required for a teacher to work with the adult learner. What is the knowledge and skills required for a teacher to work with the adult learner? Building trusting relationship. With regarding to trusting relationships, when a teacher will believe his students, then the students will also believe the teacher. In order for the long term relation should exist in between the student and teacher, where not only after completing of the school, students won't forget about the teachers. After completing of the schools, they will remember their teachers throughout their lives. This is the long life, the long term relationship. For these to, to develop this type of trusting relationships, first of all, teachers should have clear communication with the students, clear communication. There should be open communication. And apart from that, they should be harnessed. Whatever you are telling to the students, you should not lie to them. Tell the honest things, whether it is a classroom examples, or your personal examples, whatever it may be. So this makes belief, and this gives beliefs to the students that the teacher should be my role. I, the teacher is my role model. And this, this thinking will be there in the students' life. And a transparent. Like the chuparos of things, I mean to say, don't tell inside one, outside one. Transparent, it should be like open communication. In front of uh, all the other students, you, you are telling something. So if you call the student uh, aside and you are telling something to me, it should not be like that. So the relationship, the relationship should have respect. So there should be mutual respect for both student and teacher. Apart from that, Boundaries, you should not allow students to enter into your personal lives. There should be set up boundaries. So you should respect the relationship. You should have the set up boundaries so that like the, it, uh, the, 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 there will be a good relationship among the student and teacher and show commitment. If you are, if you, if you tell somebody that you will, you will complete the particular task on something, or else you do something to the students with regarding to syllabus, with regarding to any expression, something like that. You have to bond it on your words. I mean to say, you have to stick it to stick it on to your words. You have to you have to show the commitment and build trust slowly. This trust will won't come within a day, within a short period. It will it will develop slowly. Show your feelings, show empathy. There is two things: sympathy and empathy. So sympathy is just uh, feeling sad or sorrow about anyone when it comes to empathy. Step into their shoes and think like that. Like think like a student, how the student is feeling about the burden of the syllabus, how you are teaching patterns, everything. And the part of the student, you think from their side, you think from their side. So showing empathy for so what a student requires, whether the subject he is getting understand or not, you should. Learn, you should think from their side. Then, if you do all these things, the students will believe, and this builds trusting relationship. Fostering group membership. Then the next second, set team goals and cohesion. Members are attached to the group, so you have to group members. Everybody in the school, different kinds of students will be of different mindsets. The one each individual is different. Each individual is separate. So everybody's thinking pattern is different. Being as a leadership, being as a leader, you are a teacher leader. Being as a teacher leader, you should club, you should collaborate all the students together. And team goals, being as a teacher leader, you should set some sort of team goals. What goal you have to achieve? All the students should commit together. I mean to say, to you, should come together and should complete the work. 
there should be there should be no uh, i mean to say there should not be some sort of differences in between the church they should come together they should have input like that being as a leader teaching leader you should provide all these things takes ethical stance uh, so listening intentionally you should listen intentionally whatever the feelings i mean to say with regarding to their uh, problems student problems being as a leader it is the prime responsibility of a teacher to listen intentionally about their problems first of all instead of uh, each and every time you are telling to the students do that thing do that thing do this thing like that forcing them cohesiveness everything so once listen their problems and uh, if you once allow them to tell they will believe the trust will develop like this one. so if you listen intentionally they will they will trust you and this will go on like that so they will tell their problems and uh, when they tell their problems uh, when you are listening to them when you are listening to them they will be open up they will believe you and they will learn and they will and they will listen to your words like uh, your follower and you will be like a leader taking an ethical stance take a position the group believes to the right and true which means listening with an open mind as i told you listening intentionally expressing empathy showing empathy towards the students you should not criticize them all the time you don't understand something like that you should stand on there and you think like that according providing evidence based relation rational substance to your position if you took some sort of ethical stance i mean to say if you if you did some act if you did some if you did some work or something like that if they won't believe show them evidence that i did this one because for your will be with evidence with proper evidence if you tell them if you tell the students they will be happy to learn they will be happy to listen all these things and they will they will have good uh, confidence on you and you will be like a good <laughs> taking a caring stance you should care the students you should care the students in the school's premises whatever happens or any if any incident happens if anything happens you should have care towards the students whatever the things happen take responsibility and take care of the students with regard to any miscreant things anything happens care the students like creating a safe environment being as a leader any sort of any sort of difficulty comes any sort of difficulty arises in stance that you should take the responsibility and should, you should lead the students to the safe environment we it is uh, sorry for example if any sort of uh, some sort of ragging happens in the school premises in the college premises if any ragging happens or something like that student if they believes if they believes the teacher if they believes the teacher they will come directly to the teacher and they will tell to the teacher what had happened they can't girls or some boys or they also who are into what or something they can't tell each and everything to their parents they can't tell each and everything to the open society they will tell to the teacher who they believe so it is your responsibility it is the teacher's responsibility to create it to provide a safe environment for the students and cultural competence other of one's own others culture beliefs values being as a teacher you should aware of your students cultures you should be aware of your own culture and you should aware of others cultures what their language patterns if the students comes from uh, some sort of any tribal areas or something like that if there uh, you should not criticize well, generally the students or the uh, the other students so they will laugh at him they will tease him because of their culture because of their dressing pattern because of their uh, uh, talking style everything they will tease them it is the teacher who has to take care of all these things it is called the developing cultural competence and understand their culture you support them it is their culture who will have like this type of skill next facilitating professional learning for teacher for these to have this knowledge and skills required for teaching to work with adult learning what are the professional learning a teacher should have using a reflection strategy reflection strategy is nothing but bounce back what it means help strengthen leadership develop team capacity facilitate transition first of all if you have some sort of goals to develop your students if a teacher do have some sort of goal 
to develop students. When you set some sort of goals, when you set some sort of goals, and uh, you are you are working for that goals, you don't know where you are. Uh, being as a leader, what you have to do is, as a teacher, you have to stop, look back, and learn the mistakes what you did, and act accordingly. Change your plan and act accordingly. So stop, look, learn, and act. What the current situation? What it reflects? So what the mistakes I did? Like this, you have to stop. You have to check it out. What the what the mistakes you do? And you have to come back at it. Next, reflect insight. How that that reflection will be? Think an alternative explanations, making use of evidence from a range of source, recognizing your own point of view will change with the time. So, for example, if you take if you take a stand with regarding to any goal to achieve, then what will happen if that is not working out? For the student development, for the completion of the student's curriculum or something like that. If you if it, that is not working out, then stop for a while. Check it out what the mistakes you have did. And accordingly, you change your plan. So the time when the time you took this plan, I mean to say you made this plan is not adequate enough at to at present, after one one year or something like that. Change according. That is called as a reflection strategy using. And uh, Structuring dialogue and discussions. So whatever the dialogues and discussions structure, you have to be like in a pre-planned thing with the students and the, with their parents, everything. A leader, a teacher leader should have all these things. Disrupting assumptions. Disrupting assumptions. Assumptions is nothing but, see, the mind, your mind will take different stances. Natural part of, it is a natural part of cognitive process. Your mind will take different stances. So it is disrupting assumptions. How to, uh, what you have to do, disruptive or problematic when treated as facts without questioning their validity. Without questioning their validity, you will take it as facts. It is called as disruptive assumptions. Change your mindset accordingly. When a, when a student comes, when his culture stands as something, I mean to say when his culture is different from your culture. So you should not think that the particular student, if a student come from a tribal region, where their parents in their earlier generations, when they are not good, I mean to say they are some sort of uh, thieves or something like that. If their children comes to school, you should not think that these students will also become thieves or something like that. So these, these assumptions should keep apart if you want to be a good leader, teacher leader. Posting learners' engagement. So what is posting learners' engagement? Learners' interactions and cooperation with instructors and coders. For these, use cultivate learning culture among the students and consider their needs. What the learners' engagement? So, what's the, their need? What the students need? First of all, being as a teacher, you should recognize what's their need and use modern technology. Learners' engagement. So, uh, for the learners to be active, engage, use modern technology use uh, current uh, i mean to say the recent uh, technological uh, tools gadgets everything to teach them and uh, provide ongoing feedback reward learning blended learning so ongoing feedback you should take for their if the students don't want to leave the school if the students want to uh, follow you uh, uh, follow you continuously you should provide feedback what with regarding to which topics i mean to say with regarding to which percentage they are not Having good uh, feedback, something like that, change accordingly. Like, encourage collegial inquiry. So, shared dialogue helps people become more aware of their beliefs, conventions, and assumptions. So, the what the best to encourage this collegial inquiry? Model positive communication. Listen. Consider spectrum of content knowledge and understand the pedagogy, and foster mutual responsibility. So, for this, you have to listen first of all what they want. Understanding development of teacher knowledge, both in terms of current knowledge and pedagogical knowledge. So for teacher knowledge, in terms of current knowledge, with regard to the topic which you are teaching to the students, and with regarding to the pedagogy knowledge, with regard to the students' listening styles, their behavior, everything you should assess. The teacher should possess all these uh, professional quality facilities. 
I mean, these are qualifications for to become a good leader. And uh, next, dispositions, the inherent mental capabilities for a teacher. Believe that teacher learning is interwoven with student learning. If a student, if you, if a teacher wants to uh, student to learn properly, and if students want to understand it clearly, a teacher has to, a teacher has to prepare well for that subject. So when students develop, ultimately it is the teacher who will also develop. So value the work of learners. Learners is nothing but students value their work. If the students works hardly for nearly for 10 hours or 12 hours, don't simply give less marks or criticize the students because you did the work very badly or something like that. So value their work. It should be in your blood like that. So whatever the work, let them, every student will learn from the mistakes. So when they are doing any sort of mistakes or something like that, teach them, correct them. Okay, this is what the leadership quality requires in a teacher. Without that, you should not criticize them, you should not beat them, you should not do like that. Okay, when you treat them very good, when they correct their mistakes, when you do all these things, they will believe you. And it is the leadership quality for the teacher. Accept and act on constructive feedback, not destructive. When the students, when the students give their feedback to you with regarding to your teaching, with regarding to your behavior, with regarding to your whatever the things. So have a constructive feedback. Change accordingly. Change accordingly and uh, and uh, uh, give the students good output. Okay. Possess courage to take risk, any sort of risk with regarding to, as I told you, some sort of things. I mean to say, risk nowadays, what is it? Risk for the students uh, who are uh, in the colleges and the schools, uh, their, uh, their uh, thinking capabilities. So, their thinking capabilities, their, their uh, attitudes, their way of behavior, everything is different, not like earlier times. Their, everything is different. So, Instead of taking the risk to change the students, what the present teachers are doing is they are simply completing their syllabus and they are going like that. And who will who will change them? Who will change them? So take the risk. You have courage to change the students. So this is also a leadership skill a teacher should possess for the uh, well-being of the society. Reliable. And uh, you should be reliable. I mean to say, everybody, whosoever it may be, if you do all these things, say for example, if you do all these things, that students will believe you. The students will believe you and they will be reliable. Okay, next. The second one is with regarding communication knowledge and skills of a teacher. What the communication knowledge and the skills of a teacher should be? Building relationships through communication. How? Maintains objectivity. Ability to see a, see a situation accurately without influence of emotion. No emotion. Keep all these things uh, aside. And uh, think like that. Accurate. Think the situation accurately. When you pre assumptions, it is just like that. Objectivity. Uh, objectivity keep all your assumptions. Okay. Assumptions. And uh, when they accurately you have to see. Strategies to maintain objectivity. Be aware of your emotions. If you are emo if you are having two emotions, of, say for example, if a kid is a if a kid is, don't have I mean to say good proper uh, dress or something like that, don't think uh, that uh, he's a uh, poor or something like that. Maybe his parents are good, but uh, he is having some sort of a tendency like that. So you should think accurately. You should not have pre assume uh, assumptions. So be aware of your emotions. Use data and evidence. To teach to students, use data with regarding to uh, accuracy, everything, and uh, seek multiple data sources. Don't tell the students only one data, which means to uh, strictly uh, one data. They have, have multiple data sources, okay, uh, so that your mindset will change. So, uh, I mean to say, the objectivity will be maintained. Keep transparent and accountable. And keep open-minded and learn from others. This, we, this, if you do all these things, the objectivity will be maintained. Develops cultural competency. Is a set of values, behaviors, attitudes, and practices which allows individuals to work effectively across cultures. What the ways to develop this cultural competency is learn about yourself first. Cultural competency, respecting others' cultures and your own culture. 
this is the communication. I mean to say, to effectively, uh, skills of a teacher leader require for this uh, cultural competency. Learn about different cultures. As I told you, different cultures, individuals will be from different cultures, their dressing styles, their, uh, their uh, communicating styles, their eating patterns, everything will be different according to their culture. So if you are, I mean to say, say for example, if you are a Christian, if others are brand things, don't criticize them that they are vegetarians. And so like that, they should, you should value their culture. Know your own culture, know others' culture. Talk accordingly, but not criticizing or something else. So develop cultural competence. Understand adults as learners. Now, being as a leader, teacher leader, you should understand adults as learners. They are not small kids. They are learners, adults as learners. So every information, every information what you are providing, they are receiving your information. I'll tell you an example. In a class of 40, 30 to 40 students, if we teach something for one hour or half an hour, we think that the last student, I mean to say 100% of my teaching is not going to each and every student's ears. We should not like think like 1% one, 1 of our teaching will enter into each and every student's ears. I mean to say, some students will catch some points, other students will catch other points. So every student will understand according to his mindset and his thinking pattern, thinking capacity. So the adults as learners, they will learn many things. So a teacher leader should be in a position to teach to the students in a very well manner. Risk inviting and honors diverse views. As I told, risk inviting. One should take the risk with regarding to the uh, with regarding to any sort of uh, uh, incident happens or some sort of uh, changing the behavior of the students or something like that. They should take risk and honoring diverse views. Several people, several persons will tell several views. Sometimes it will disturb our mind. So we should not get distracted. We should not get distracted. We should honor the views. Yes, the 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 other person told this point. So how much fat lies in that point? You should assess it. You should analyze it. Then only it will be, you can take judgments. I mean, so you, can, you cannot take judgments with your assumption. You can check the validity of the information and then. So before the honor the diverse views, you should listen to each and every student's voice first of all. Comfortable with healthy and productive discussion. The discussion should not be in a violent way. When a student being as a leader, being as a leader, a teacher should have a productive discussions. It should lead to it should lead to some sort of productivity with regarding to ideas. Students as a, the students will give several ideas that they will get several ideas and they will tell these ideas to the teachers. When they tell these ideas to the teachers, a teacher should be in a position to tell them. They, they are comfort, uh, they are, they are uh, having good discussion with the student. I mean to say, they should discuss in a productive way. They should encourage their ideas. They should, they should encourage the students to develop such ideas and they should implement that ideas and they should make a project or something like that. It will make students a good one. Next, technical skills of a teacher. For these communication skills, what the technical skills a teacher should require? Facilitate learning focused conversation. Learning focused conversation. It should, whatever the conversations you are having. So, a teacher, what the skills require? It should focus on uh, learning focused conversations. I mean to say, it should, it should, it should uh, enrich the minds of the teachers. Give and receive feedback. Whatever the students do, any sort of mistakes, or else uh, if the students are not good, you know, if they are getting low marks or something like that, give the feedback. What should do? What should do, and how they should improve? How should uh, how they should improve? And if they receive feedback, if they tells to you that your teaching is not proper, that you are you are beating them unnecessarily, or you are something, your thinking pattern with regarding to the any set of uh, any set of subjects, something like that, it's not good. Receive the feedback, change accordingly, and deep listening skills. 
we should uh, fire up rising, asking clarifying questions. So deep listening skills, I mean to say, the listening skills should have a meaningful way. Questioning strategies, we should, uh, so I will give an example. If a teacher is teaching, if a teacher is teaching in the classroom, then what will happen? Many students will uh, have some sort of activeness, and others will, won't have activity. Some will be like a day lazy, some will be a bit dull, or something like drowsiness, everything. So, what then being as a teacher, what he should do is he should spark the minds of the students with his questions, he should ask questions so that there will be some sort of spark, they should be active, and they should once they are active, they will they will receive the information what a teacher is giving. Be data driven dialogue. <laughs> know the difference between conversation, dialogue, and discussion. What's the difference in between converse, uh, conversations, dialogue, and discussion? Have the all clarity in your mind. So, synthesize and summarize, use mediation skills. So, to synthesize, to summarize the discussion, all these things, mediation skill should be there. Facilitate large and small groups. So in these classrooms, you should maintain the, some sort of large groups, the small groups, you should maintain the groups so that they will discuss the things. There will be group discussions will be there like that. So you should have that creativity, you should have that potentiality to make all these things. Effectively use technology to enhance communication. So if the it is the old age days that uh, the students will sit outside under the trees or something like that, the teachers will teach there. So it is like the Ramendra Tiger Open Schools. But now, when this classroom is huge, when the crowd, I need to say the students are more, what you should do is use some sort of uh, uh, technology, like uh, using of mics, using of LCD projectors or something like that. So this technical skills a teacher should possess to become a good leader in the eyes of the students. So use this type of uh, technical uh, technology, effective use technology to, to enhance communication. When you use these mics, when you use these product projectors, everything, LCD screens, all these things. So your communication will be enhanced. I mean to say the students who are sitting in the last, they can also listen all this. Thing. Written communication, memos, minutes, emails, everything. The written communication, like uh, uh, fair everything you should uh, develop and you should have good written communication. Strategies for setting up spaces, materials, and places like this. You should have strategies for all these things. Next, dispositions. For this effective communication, what's the dispositions? Uh, inherent with the mental characteristics. Okay, this is uh, for the teachers. So dispositions, what are what required? Honors all perspectives. So every perspective you should honor. Hold a positive perception uh, that all are working in the best interest of the students. So everybody is working in the best interest of the student. You should have the thinking capability. Value professional expertise. You should value the professional expertise and fosters community. When this, when you do all this, when you are having this type of uh, uh, thinking patterns, everything, it will foster the community. Everybody will come closer and they will be in good community. Next, collaborative skills of a teacher. What are the collaborative skills a teacher? Teaching, developing, and using norms of collaboration, conflict resolution, mediation skills. So collaboration. Collaboration is with regarding to uniting all the students. When you, when a, when a teacher will become a good leader, when all comes together, when you are with them, when when with the students when you are solving their problems when you are listening their problems when you are teaching them happily then all this comes under collaborative skills of a teacher you have to unite all of them irrespective of their culture irrespective of their religion irrespective of the whatever the places where they come from so leave all those things and you should collaborate all the students for this we should have teaching developing using norms of collaboration what are the norms? conflict resolution mediation skills when there is a, ultimately, when two person comes to closer, I mean to say in the school, 30 to 40 students will be there. When 30 to 40 students comes closer, ultimately, uh, uh, they, uh, their uh, cultural, their culture will be different, their ideas will be different, their thoughts will be different, everything will be different. So when conflicts arises, when conflicts arises, being as a teacher, leader, you should mediate, you should mediate, you should pacify the students, you should pacify the students, you should mediate them, and you should resolve the conflicts. So it is a collaborative skills of a teacher. 
using protocols or other strategies, protocols like uh, who is the uh, CR, class representatives, who is the leader, who is the girls leader, like that, like protocols and other strategies and the plan to collaborate, how they should collaborate. If they complete some sort of project which is given by you, if they complete the project, then what the best things you will give to them, like gifts or something like that. Our strategy is a teacher leader should follow. Modeling and valuing diverse opinion. Valuing diverse opinion, as we had discussed earlier also. If different sector, if the different uh, cultural students, I mean, to say the, the students come from different backgrounds. Different background students will get different sort of mindsets. If they are having different ideas, there were diverse opinions, you should you should you, you should listen to all those things and you should value to all these diverse opinions and you should give value to them. Matching language to the situation. So, as I said to you, students will be have different mindset. So, matching language according to the situation. If you are, if you are, uh, if you are teaching, if you are uh, giving any speech in some sort of, uh, I mean to say, in uh, open auditory, in any speech, in a meeting or something like that, your tone will be like a high pitch tone. Uh, your tone will be in a high pitch. When you are teaching in a classroom, your tone will be altogether different. So according to the situation, your language should change. If you are pacifying the student, if students get less marks or something like that, if you are pacifying the student, you are consoling the students, you take the students and you, you talk with them smoothly with good language or something like that. So you should use your language according to the situation. Sharing responsibility and leadership. You should be as a uh, teacher leader, what you have to do is you should share responsibility. If some students are unable to do some sort of jobs, whether their home runs or something like that, or else they 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 you should sh share their responsibility and you should lead them. If if you take the students out for any picnic or something like that, the parents will believe on you and they will send their students for the trip based on your your what I mean to say they believe you that you bring their students back happily home. So this is what is belief of their parents so you have to take that responsibility of their parents and being as a teacher like just like a father you should provide the caring and everything so then the students will believe you so in holding yourself accountable to the group goals and outcomes accountability responsibility and accountability being accountable is very um, uh, i mean to say being accountable is very greater the response sharing the rest taking the responsibility you are accountable for the group's goals and outcomes what will be the outcomes when the students i mean to say the group of the students when they fail in the examination when they fail in the examination it is that you are responsible you should take the responsibility that what the mistake you have did what the mistake other teachers have did so you should provide communication you should get communication over all the teachers so what the mistake you have to so rectify that mistake and that is what is accountable for that and the group's goals and for the group's goals and outcomes if outcome is good take the responsibility if outcome is bad then also you have to take the responsibility if outcome is bad you should not put, push that failure on others like that next <laughs> organization skills what are the skills are required for the uh, teacher leader facilitating a meeting for this collaboration meeting for all the teachers say for example if you are uh, conducting a meeting you should organize if you are organizing a meeting facilitating a meeting you should call all the teachers all the students everybody and you should take the lead and you, you should tell your objectives of the meeting and you should tell uh, for what the purpose of the meeting everything documenting a meeting so organization skills what are the skills you require a teacher again? so documenting a meeting the minutes of the meeting so what the decisions we took on the meeting we should note down everything these are the skills a teacher must require so moving the group to task completion so being as a teacher leader you should move a group to, for the, to complete the task knowing the resources and how to access the resources so what the resources is uh, accessible and how to access how the what are the resources available and how to access these resources you have you should have a clear cut idea about this delegating responsibility to the group members being as a uh, leader 
you should delegate your responsibilities you should delegate your authority power also sometimes so that each and everybody will do some sort of work when you share this responsibility delegating means sharing this responsibility giving others to do the work when you share this responsibility to others group members for the students and the other teachers they will see they will say for example if you are a leader you should not do the work alone you should not do the work uh, you should not do the work alone. you should give this responsibility to others also delegate so that the work will be completed by the groups and disposition what is the disposition required knows when to compromise a leader should know when to compromise when to take action and when to compromise Be able to read the group mindsets especially admitting when wrong and don't want. honest courageous communication should be there and a device desire to work with others and passion for topic motivates others knowledge and content of pedagogy strong subject matter knowledge including assessment strategies the ability to analyze both subject matter concepts and pedagogical strategies personal experience using effective pedagogical strategies in the classrooms so these are the things knowledge of content is nothing but when you are uh, when you are uh, when you are uh, taking any class or something content if you are delivering any information to the students or to the teachers whosoever it may be so you should have the knowledge of the content they will to analyze the both the subject matter concepts and pedagogical strategies so subject matter you should analyze the subject matter concept and these strategies so apart from the personal experience using effective pedagogy strategies in the class of your personal experiences children are very much attentive children are very much attentive if you tell your own personal experiences to them if you if you if you do good things or if any naughty things or something like that they will treat you like a hero generally boys and girls boys and small kids what they will think is their mother uh, as a, i mean say their uh, god goddesses and he, their father as hero hero or heroine or something like that so their father as hero if you teach her, if he gives a good personal experience if you do have that you achieved something good greater or something like that to you in the or uh, school days in the or college days and something like that they will treat you like your hero so you should you should uh, like leader also so personal experience you should use effective pedagogy strategies in the classroom skills required for this ability to assist colleagues at multiple entry points to increase content knowledge in the classroom application so you should tell to all your colleagues also with regarding to this one so you should tell to all your colleagues that what the what they have to do is so subject knowledge increase the subject knowledge and uh, content increase the subject content knowledge and uh, with regarding to classroom applications and uh, for this what the teacher leaders need is lifelong learner lifelong learner if a person who learns every day if a person who learns every day he will teach many things to students many new things upgradation of knowledge should be there for the teachers how it will be upgradation of knowledge every day if a teacher after settling into a position the teacher after settling into a position he should uh, he should upgrade his knowledge i mean to say after getting into a position he will leave all the new learning habits when they leave learning habits whatever the knowledge it is there in the brain will be over exhausted at a point of time so the students won't get new ideas new thoughts anything so a teacher they will get students will get bored they won't listen to your classes it it will happen so every day you should know the new things you should know the new things and you should tell the new things to the students every day then your class will be interesting to for the students and your class will be effective so a reflective a reflective means as i told you earlier also for this knowledge of content and pedagogy you are reflective i mean say whatever where you are check it out once where you are where your knowledge content where your knowledge process where your knowledge is right now so check it out once and you reflect you correct it and uh, you have a lifelong learning every day learning and uh, go through like that if you are like that you will be like a good leader committed to a uh, supporting growth of others you should you should give this opportunity to others also 
if you are good enough if you are good learner lifelong learner if you are good learner if you are good knowledgeable person then other other teachers who are working along with you the students everybody will ask you ask you the doubts they will ask their doubts to you they will get clarification from you so like this you are supporting a growth of others also like students faculty like this so enjoy challenges when uh, say for example any teachers ask any new things students ask any new things any new project comes you should not avoid that one you should not leave that one you should not leave like that so take that challenge take that responsibility enjoy that one like that so systems thinking when I, when the teacher is working in his, in any institutions in any institutions what the knowledge of the teacher should uh, what the knowledge a teacher should possess recognize layers of the system it is called as hierarchy what is the hierarchy of the organization or uh, how it will be like that they should recognize uh, layers understand power structure and decision making in the context so where the power structure i mean to say the management so who will take decisions in the organization for the betterment of the students for the betterment of the faculty for the betterment of everybody have the knowledge of all those things understand and work with the rules of the hierarchy within the rules of the hierarchy so when there will be rules in a particular organization everywhere there will be some sort of rules so you have to understand that rules or work according to that rules garner support from and uh, work with the stakeholders stakeholders is nothing but the students faculty whosoever working so support get support with them deal effectively with resistance if you are implementing any sort of rule if there is any resistance deal effectively pacify them make them understand like that so that they will have confidence on you so uh, facilitate collective inquiry practices so collective inquiry so everybody if anything if anything ask any questions comes like that so we have to facilitate give information understand and leverage financial resource allocation so uh, resource allocation is very important for any organization so we have to uh, leverage finances understand so how it is coming something like ask the right questions at right time so you should ask the management everybody so you know, these right questions at the right time next with regard skills and uh, for advocacy set achievable goals you have to set achievable goals uh, with regarding to when you are working in an organization create and implement plan to meet goals so have the proper plan to meet the achieve goals when you when you set a goal so have a clear cut of plan so build capacity for sustainability if you want to work long i mean to say work long in that organization so sustainability so build capacity you should have possessed knowledge you should have capable capacity skills everything identify decision makers who will have decisions like that identify so have good contact with them craft and deliver an effective message so your message i mean to say whatever the communication you are having the written both oral verbal everything should have a good nice one mobilize people into action so being as a leader leader in the organization you have to mobilize people into action this question what the leader should have interested in large bigger picture attend the to relationships and the ability to read people and situations embraces the opportunity to work with those with diverse views so key traits of the teacher this is the five things that uh, discussed and uh, next is uh, regarding the traits the teachers in a leadership position what are the traits as we have discussed this one leadership skills if a teacher wants to be an effective leader in an organization so in an organization whatever it may be what the traits uh, a teacher is required effective communication the whatever you are telling to the others whatever it is either it is uh, with regarding to lessons whether it is with regarding to those clarification or whatever it may be your know, communication should be effective they should the, everybody should understand what you are saying empathy instead of uh, pity uh, saying pity for some uh, feeling pity for somebody you should have empathy so stand on their shoes think according to them and take a decision so compassion you should have compassion towards others motivation to learn and every day you should be a learner a person who is a teacher every day you should have learner provide counsel to all angles the different skills teachers uh, leader courses listening skills critical thinking skills emotional intelligence emotional intelligence not only taking care of your own emotions you should take care of other emotions also you should not hurt others emotion because of your own emotions the problem solving skills technical skills team working skills 
and organization skills. These are the these are the skills, uh, traits, a uh, leadership process. I mean, it's a teacher leadership process. Apart from the some qualities of a good teacher, what are the qualities? As I said, empathy, analytical, adaptable, courageous. They should be courageous. Whatever the situations arises, committed and motivated. Communication and connection. Love for learning. Teacher every day. A teacher is every day learner. So uh, there should be a love for learning. Engaging classroom and a community presence and uh, passionate. They should have passion for teaching, passion for leading, passion uh, for uh, towards the development of the students and learners. Right. Next, leadership styles in education. The, the leadership styles, affiliative, authoritative, coaching, emotional, instructional, and coerced. So different styles of leadership styles in education. So like this, a teacher should possess all this, affiliate. So once if you are good with the students, they will affiliate with you. They will, they will, they will, they will get close with you. They will get close with you. And uh, if you are authoritative, you should have authority. You should command the students what should do, what should not should do like that. Coaching, when you are giving coaching, I mean to say coaching style of leadership in education, you should assess the qualities in student. What type of qualities, whether he's a good learner, whether he's a good analytical thinker, what type of qualities he do he do process when uh, based on that one, you should, you should you will take the decision. And emotional. Emotional. If anybody is having some sort of if anybody is having some sort of some sort of a pain, some sort of difficulty, you should have emotional touch, understand their emotions, act accordingly. But don't insist to others like students, uh, teacher. If any other teacher, they they should also believe you. They should also believe. You. So if how they will believe you when you are emotionally connected with others, they will believe you. Okay. Then they will see a leader in you. Instructional. You should give instructions. When once you are well aware of the things, well aware of the facts, well aware of the knowledge. Even you are having knowledge, well aware of the facts. Then you will give instruction to others to do like this, like this. When with all these things, when they are not listening, then you should coerce this force. This is also uh, like the Samadana, Dandopada, like this. You should use the force also to change the others. Next is what is the methods to improve teacher leadership skills? What is the methods? Offer opportunities for feedback. You should offer opportunities for feedback. Give them. Tell them whatever they want about you. Then change according to their expectation. And being as a leader, you have this, you should have the, you should possess this quality. Give the opportunity to give feedback. If you are not giving an opportunity, if you are if you are, if you are not giving an opportunity, they won't tell what the mistakes you did. Then how can you change and how you become leader? It is not possible. So give opportunity for others to give feedback about you. Develop your active listening skills. Don't tell all the time. If you are telling all the time, they will they'll get bored. So develop active. So be, to become a good leader, first of all, you should become a good listener. Listen to them first. What what they want from you. So learn to adjust approaches as needed. Once if you are having your mindset is something like that. Once your approach is something, so change according to the need. When you need some something like that, change accordingly. Offer to mentor new teachers. So when new teachers comes into school, so mentor, I mean to say guide them, guide them according to the new approaches, standards, everything. Improve the way you organize. Every day you are organizing skills, organizing skills. So improve day by day, every day. Perform evaluations and use them for the growth. Growth. Evaluation. Evaluation is nothing but analyzing. Every day analyze what the what the new things you did, what the New development activities you took every time you analyze them and we use them for the growth. Set goals for your teams, whether it is teachers or the students, whosoever it may be. Being as a teacher leader, set the goals for your teams. Once they achieve the goals, appreciate them. Once they won't achieve the goals, tell them how to achieve, how to achieve, how to rectify, rectify the mistake, rectify the mistakes, and lead them towards the success. So thank you all. This is the qualities of a uh, teacher leader who should uh, have to lead a successful life in the schools. Hello. Hello.
ಹಲೋ